Wolf Bear, Yorkshire IPA. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. I got one here today from Yorkshire. And this is the Wolf Beer Yorkshire, Yorkshire English IPA. And there's not much I can find out about this brewery. They ceased trading in 2016. But, no, sorry, that's a lie, 2015. But they appear to be contract brewed somehow elsewhere. Now, I think the original name was Wolfdale Beer, and that concern ceased to exist in 2015. And it's been brewed now under the name Wolf Beer Yorkshire, somewhere in Yorkshire. But the trouble is there's no information out there, so I can't give you that. And I have tried, believe me. I know that they do sell this in Waitrose for 195, which is less than I paid for this one. This came from the House of Trembling Madness. And that's really all I can tell you about it. I'm just fucking treading water here, to be honest. So that's all I can tell you about the brewery. However, it does look quite interesting. Now they've called it a Yorkshire IPA. Again, the term IPA, I know I've said it a thousand times, but to me it doesn't mean anything at all. The whole description of IPAs has gone completely out the window. You can virtually call any beer an IPA and get away with it. For me, I, the, the term IPA is just a marketing gimmick. Originally, of course, it was an English style of beer, and this does make a point of saying this is an English India Pale Ale. Now, Companies, I like that they've done that because companies give all sorts of fucking bullshit descriptions about IPA. You get white IPAs, black IPAs, New England IPAs, West Coast IPAs. I mean, the, the whole list is there. I've e even seen India Pale Lager before. That's how meaningless the title is at the moment. But it's always nice, for me anyway, to have a really good English IPA. And there are some really good ones out there. Of course, the Bengal Lancer being one of them, that's an excellent English style IPA. And there's been a few others on the channel as well that I've tried that have been really good. So I'm hoping this is gonna be something of that ilk. Now, I'll get onto the description of it in the next section, but it does promise to be quite good. So let's stop guessing and let's investigate. Right, it says, a perfectly balanced English style IPA, brewing with hot character from its four varieties, balanced with a multi backbone and a res resolute bitter finish. That pretty much sums up what an English IPA is all about. However, the hops, the hop choice that they put in this will make a big difference. If there's anything pertaining to American hops, then forget it because I'm just not interested. If you're gonna call it an English IPA and put American hops in it, which a couple of companies have done. And for me, it, it just ruins it. Uh, we love to enjoy this beer with piquant Peroni pizza. Okay. Well, they, at least I haven't said curry. is not really a good choice to drink with an English style IPA in my opinion. I'm just looking at the ingredients. There's water, malt, barley, wheat, and armfuls of hops. Yes, but the type of hop would be very nice. Wolf Beer Yorkshire, proud of our craft. We hope you will enjoy this beer. We are a small independent craft brewery dedicated to the fine art of producing quality ales. We combine passion with tradition, but always with a modern contemporary twist. Now there's the alarm bell. 
if I put American hops in that, then I'm going to have the right hump. This beer was originally crafted in a converted paper mill on the banks of the River Wolf in Yorkshire, in the Yorkshire fucking Dales. A place that brought us great inspiration to create the finest beers possible using only the finest ingredients available. Okay, well, there isn't much in the way of a brew sheet on here. So, let's just get it open and see what it's all about. As is normal, I'm drinking it out of a London Pride glass. Just to wind up the people in the Republic of Yorkshire. Oh, this is gonna fizz up, you little bastard. Now it doesn't say this is bottle conditioned, but yeah, I just caught that in time. Wow, I can get the aromas from here. Looks a little bit hazy. Very nice bubbles on that, I have to say. Quite tight, uniform bubbles. Mmm, that smells quite nice actually. There's distinct orange zest in that. And some quite flowery and herbal type aromas. Mmm, interesting. I can't tell you whether I've seen this down in the Waitrose in the south of England, but I imagine that Waitrose further north may have had, may have this. I'll tell you what I tried last night, I was in the Witherspoons, I met a mate for a beer, and uh, while I was waiting I've decided to go in, they've got a beer festival going on at the moment, and I, I've reviewed the old dairy Copper Top, which is a bitter. And I really wasn't impressed with it out of the bottle, but I had some on tap or out of the cask yesterday. Oh, it was gorgeous. It was absolutely amazing. Really, really impressed with it. So again, I will say that beers in the bottle will taste different. I mean, this is, this is a given. They will taste different to what you get on draft or on out of a cask. In fact, I'm, I'd be intrigued to see what this tastes like on cask, but it's, uh, Reasonably murky, amber, nice one and a half finger white head. Smells okay, no nasty aromas. Let's see what it's like, like on the palette. And that's not bad. Mm. Yeah. That is everything I would expect. Is that a lump of yeast flowing in there? It's not, is it? No, this is not bottle conditioned. This is really nice. It's got quite a lot of orange zest on it and it's got a, that bitter hoppy type finish on it. And on cue, Percy comes into the room. Percy, you can sniff out good beer, can't you, mate? Hey? Come on in. Come up here, mate. Come on. Get out of it. What do you think of that? Yeah, <laughs> you nearly got a bit there, didn't you, you little git? That wasn't supposed to happen. He's a little git, yeah, that's made you sneeze, isn't it? Cheeky little bastard. Oh, and here comes the cat. Fucking okay, hell, they're all in here. I think they think it's feeding time. Anyway, let's get back to the beer. Oh, oh this is really nice. There's almost jammy style notes in that as well. I'm going to put him down there because he's, he's, he's making me arm ache. He was supposed to get a little bit out of that. Little snaky little git. But this is really nice. I do like this. Uh, there was a little bit of an alarm bell ringing when it said it had a, a bit of a contemporary twist on it, which in my mind, that automatically means American hops. But, I have to say this is quite nice. Mmm. 
yeah, this is what I would expect from an English IPA. It's got all the characteristics. It's got that malty biscuit malt on the palate, but then you get all your fruit and your grassy hoppy notes on there. And then the finish is like bitter orange coupled with bitter grassy notes. And it's quite nice actually. A very good example of an English IPA. That's Percy licking his lips because he knows that he's just had a good beer. By the way, I joke when I say about Percy drinking beer, do not give beer to dogs. I've said it before. They're allergic to hops. They can't digest it and it plays havoc with their digestive system. Yes, you probably have seen dogs drinking beer before by idiot owners. You should never give it to animals. Beer shouldn't be given to animals. Their constitution just cannot handle the ethanol and in dogs' cases, the hops as well. So don't do it, kids. Send it all to me if you want to give it to your dogs. It's very nice, it's very drinkable as well, I have to say. I don't think it compares to the Bengal Lancer. I think that's that's a cut above the rest, that is. And there's some other ones out there. The one that came from Cheddar Ales, that stands out as being really good. I'm not sure how they compare in size, the brewery compares in size, but the Cheddar Ale stuff was, I think, brewed on a a slightly bigger scale than this but that was really nice as well that stood out as being excellent as did their porter as well oh actually i tried a rudgate chocolate porter last night and that was really good as well that was on cask that was from the witherspoons really impressed with that so witherspoons i was having a little rant about how crap their beer was the beer selection that they've got but this beer festival that they occasionally put on they have cider festivals as well but the beer festival they're putting on at the moment is well worth checking out and it depends where you are in the country but you will get some regional owls and some from around and about everywhere the rudgate stuff obviously comes from yorkshire i think it might have even come from york but it was really good i was really impressed with that chocolate stout that they did I thought it was going to be a bit of a novelty beer, quite sweet and all that, but it wasn't. It was a very, very good stout, in my opinion. But anyway, I'm digressing. I'll keep changing the subject. That's really nice. I really do like this. It's got everything I would expect from an English-style IPA. And this, I think, is what we do best. And I know... As I mentioned before, the term IPA doesn't mean anything anymore. But to me, IPAs, in my head, will always taste like this. Not your American IPAs. They should have called that something else. I really, It really grates that they've called that style of beer, you know, that super hoppy American style beer, an IPA. If they'd have called it something else, like an American ale, fine. But they didn't. But there you go, you know, spilt milk. This is very good. I quite like this. So what's the verdict on Wolf Beer, Yorkshire, Yorkshire IPA? It's very good indeed, I have to say. 5.1% as well. It's, well, is there a hard and fast rule about the ABV on, a, on an IPA? Usually it's a, a roughly around 5%, between 5 and 6%. It's a little bit stronger, but this is nice. And, and as I say, and as I keep saying, it's a very good example of the style. For 195, you can get this in Waitrose. I'm not sure whether you can get it down here in Waitrose. I got this from House of Trembling Madness. But for 195, that is not a bad price for this IPA. It's certainly not as good as the Bengal Lancer, which, I don't know whether they sell that in Waitrose or not. I know they do the 1845 and they obviously do London Pride as well. But if you can get this in Waitrose, get it because you will not be disappointed if you're a fan of that English style IPA. 
I like it. I think it's a really good example, and I'm going to give that an 8 out of 10. I think it's a solid 8 out of 10 as well. I'm not going to give it more because I think there are better IPAs out there. As I just mentioned, the Cheddar Rails IPA and the Bengal Lancer from Fuller's, probably two of the best English style IPAs that I've tried so far. I'm sure there must be just as good, if not maybe better, English style IPAs. But that is really nice. And that is a winner from, I don't care whether it's contract brewed or not, or they're a, well, they say they're a craft brewer, micro brewer. I don't care. This is good beer. And remember, beer is working class champagne. <laughs>